Good evening from Maryland, and I'm sorry about that slight 10 minute delay we just had there, but you know, just working out some of the technical difficulties, but I'd like to welcome everybody to this week's Faruner Technology Showcase. I'm Tim Moore, Faruner's East Coast General Manager. And I'm Brandon Christopher, Faruner's Light Marine Field Service Lead. In this episode, I'd like to introduce you to our powerful new software for TZ Touch 3, version 2.01. This software provides many new useful features as well as overall enhancements to the user interface of the TZT3. As we go along, please ask us any questions that come to mind when they come to mind because we will be addressing them towards the end of our live stream. Indeed, and you know, this software really does make the TZ Touch 3 that's already intuitive even easier to use. I know that's hard to believe, but as Brandon mentioned, we have a lot of stuff to cover. Uh, we'll be talking about stuff for fishermen. We'll be talking about stuff for cruisers. Absolutely. We pretty much have something for everybody in this new software. So let's jump right in. All right. So one of the first things I want to point out, because it's one of the little features I like a lot. If you remember back with our VX2s and you've been a loyal Furno fan those many years ago, when you started up, you were able to put a picture of your boat, your fish, your family, your dog, whatever you wanted on the boot up screen. We've brought that back with the TZ Touch 3. And you can go right online to the product page and find instructions on how to do that. It's just a nice feature when you boot up or shut down. It is, and it's really cool to see, you know, your own pictures, a picture you've chosen to see, and it's really easy to install. Like Brandon said, go check online. We have step-by-step uh, -step instructions that are really easy to get that loaded up for you. Absolutely, it's just a nice custom feel. Yep. So after you see that splash page, one of the first things you'll notice, Tim, if you could push the home button for me. We've changed up the default loadout. So before you would see several large icons and then a bunch of small ones, and you had to slide left or right to find them all. Now we start them out as small ones so that you can see all 16 that you can have right on one page. Absolutely, and it just makes everything quicker and easier to access. Uh, we have everything that I've already built uh, for this uh, seminar right now. Uh, so all 16 icons are full. But all on one page, you don't have to swipe to the right to get more icons out. So once again, what you're going to find uh, throughout the entire seminar we're talking about tonight is that everything we've done in 2.01 was to not only offer new features, but to make the features we have and the new features even easier for you, for you to use. Quick access, just one or two presses and you're done. Something else you'll notice on this home page is the nickname at the top of the screen. So you can see on this one, it's just the product number, which is default. If you've set up nicknames for all your displays, like maybe Pilot House Port or Wing Station Starboard, you can have that name up here up top. It just makes it easy to identify. Absolutely. Some other things are global settings, things that you probably don't want different on every MFD, or you just don't want to spend the time to go and set this one up and then do the same thing you just did on the one beside it. Absolutely. One of the first things is that welcome screen you see where it comes up and says, let's navigate or demo or tutorial, press the let's navigate, it'll do that on all of them. And then when you acknowledge that navigation disclaimer, it does that as well. And the same thing's true for all the icons on the homepage that we just looked at. When you set up one unit, all of those icons will automatically appear on any other TZT3s you have on your network. Yeah, it keeps it really easy. Something you can see on this page is the data box. The data segment of the data box is a global across all pages and across all your MFDs. An MFD being the multifunction display, the TZT3. The route page on this one or radar fish finder for each one that you're on is custom to each display. Maybe you want more data over here than you do on your flybridge or wing station. Exactly. And another thing is the weather. The weather too, absolutely. So, you know, one of the biggest things uh, we heard from customers and, you know, we thought was a great idea was a lot of people were using the free nav center weather that you find in uh, Furuno's TZT lineup, uh, including the TZ Touch 3. And uh, what you can do is if you download nav center weather on say this one display, that nav center weather will be available to you on all other displays as well without you having to do anything. Definitely. It kind of caught people as a shock sometimes. You download it into Marina in your pilot house, and then you go on your cruise, you get offshore, you go upstairs because it's nice out, you want to check the weather, that file wasn't there. Now right. it's one and done across the whole network. Right, nothing extra you have to do. Download it on one, and it's across the board. Exactly. While you're on that trip going along and you see something neat on your screen and you want to take a screenshot, something we've changed now is the way that's saved. It's a little easier to access. Before, you would do your two finger touch that you set up for a function gesture and it would save it right to the USB stick. And that was it. You had to pull it, plug it into a PC to go identify it. Now there's an easier way. Absolutely. So when you take your screenshot with your two finger touch, 
essentially not only is it saving it to the jump drive like we just discussed, so that part hasn't changed, it's geo-referencing that screen capture to where you're located. And uh, it actually shows up as a small icon on the screen that you can go back and look at anytime you want. That makes it really nice. It's just easier to pull up. You probably want to see those while you're on the boat more than when you're just home. And also, like you know, you said, you're talking about custom wallpaper. What a better way to get a, you know, using a screenshot you took, whether it's a fish you caught or, you know, whether it's a screenshot you took of a, a sounder picture. Or a crazy storm you were caught in the middle of. Absolutely. It's Anything just, could be used for wallpaper. Some proof. Speaking of storms on radar... We have done some uh, good enhancements on the radar overlay. Before, I think one of the reasons I wasn't really a fan of it was it was just so much information. The hard red targets like land or a boat, they were just as overpowering as the weak echoes, the little green and yellow, like a piece of marsh or a little just false sea clutter, anything. Right. What we've done now is those yellows, oranges, and greens are faded a lot more than the hard red targets. So it really makes for a better presentation. Absolutely. And, you know, you want to see what's important to you and you want to let the other stuff kind of, you know, go by the wayside. And that's the best way to do it by making those targets small so you know what you have to worry about and what you don't. Definitely. So I think I'm going to give that feature a try and I'll give it another chance. Speaking of the ease of use that we mentioned earlier, just making everything easy, if you have a roto key, which you'll find on the MC005, the big remote, or the TZT9F and TZT12F, setting up your home pages are simple now. Just twist and click. You scroll over to the plus sign, click, pick your page, click, pick what you want on the page and click. You're done. Easy as it gets. Absolutely. Then with the smaller remote, the vertical one, the MC004, as you can probably see on the graphic across the screen now, We've made it easier to switch pages. If you have one display with a split screen, just pressing that switching button will take you from your half page through your other quarter page and then your other quarter page. If you have two MFDs or TZT3s, press and hold that button and you'll go from this display and hop over to this display. Just easy as it can be. Exactly. And now, uh, yeah. Brandon kind of distracted me here because he brought up one of my favorite things in the new software. So what we're going to talk about now is PBG or personal bathymetric generator. Have you ever thought about making your own underwater charts? TZT3 will do it with version 2.01 and a DFF3D multi-beam sonar. And I got to tell you, I've been testing this since last fall and I have yet to find anything about it I don't like. No, it really is nice. And as he's going to set up and show you a couple things on it, it's quick. You record about twice the depth and width so if you're in 200 feet of water, you're recording about 400 feet wide. So you can literally record football fields in a matter of minutes. And it does. It really does turn out that quickly. And so what we're looking at right now is PBG turned on. You can see we've already made a file. The, this file was taken out in Tacoma, Washington. And right now it's just showing PBG with the colors. And right now it's differentiating it from colors from 213 feet to 688 feet. And, you know, that, that shows some really good information, but we can keep going deeper and deeper uh, to show an absolute amount of information with an outstanding picture. We swipe, swipe up from the bottom, we can turn our depth contours to on, and now watch what happens. Now we can see all the detailed contour lines that we've been recording the whole time showing on our screen. And all this information is saved right to the micro SD card on board. But we can even go one step further, as good as this already looks, if we go to home and settings and then the chart plotter, we can scroll up, and I just want to tell you guys, out of the box, PBG terrain shading is turned to off, as you see here, but you have a few different selections. You can be light, medium, or strong. So instead of going through all three, I'm just going to throw it on medium, and we can see what that does to our PBG picture. Now look at this. Not only do we have our contour lines, we have a great look at I mean, I just don't know how you could get better bathymetry of the bottom. And you're making these yourself. These are your files that you can do anything with, and they're always on your TZT3, always accessible. If you happen to, you know, be out cruising one day and don't want to look at them, you simply turn them off, and they're gone, and you're back to a normal plotter picture. But at any given time, you want to turn them right back on. You don't lose that information. Just click on DFF3D, and your PBG information comes right back on the screen. And if I'm not mistaken, you can record years worth of data. Absolutely. So when we were testing, we did some calculations. And what we found out is, as many of you know, we have all the chart cards, uh, both raster and vector. 
and some paid cards uh, or paid charts built into the micro SD card we ship with every unit uh, TZT3 that goes out the door. For the Americas. For the Americas, out. yes, yes, let's make that clear. Uh, but there is some spare space on it. Yeah. So what we found out is if you recorded eight hours a day, seven days a week, you could do PBG files for 43 years before you ran out of room. So good luck doing that. It's a lot of mapping data. So for this feature, you will need a TZ Touch 3 running the V2.01 software, as well as a DFF 3D multi-beam sonar running the appropriate transducer. Exactly. Speaking of phishing features or mapping features, fish it and drift it. Something that is amazing to me. I'm terrible at lining up and drifting over a point that I want to hit, but this has been described as cheating by some people. So check this out. The first one, fish it. Fish it is a basically a waypoint that you never arrive to. It's a fishing waypoint. So unlike a navigation waypoint where you're trying to get somewhere, when you're fishing an area, you're not trying to get the, you're not trying to get to that area. You're just trying to work around that pinnacle or that wreck or that spot. And a fish it creates a temporary waypoint with temporary track lines, so you can see where you are. You'll see. Uh, suddenly range rings around your own ship, around your own boat, that tell you how far away you are at all times to the actual fish it spot, and you get a top bar that gives you that same digital information. See range and bearing to fish it, your, your fish it spot. Then as a companion feature, we took it a step further. We added drift it to the fish it, to the fish it feature. So with drift it, once you've set your fish it mark, now you want to drift that point. But you know, you could have converging currents and winds that you right. don't, it's confusing. It's not only confusing, it's sometimes it's misleading as well. You know, yeah. you'll come out here as a captain, as an angler, experienced, and you'll base your position on the, you know, the, the, the conditions around you, right? And I'll say, hey, well, you know what? The wind is from this direction at approximately 10 to 15 knots or five, whatever it may be. And I'll guesstimate to the very best of my ability where I believe I need to stop the boat in order to drift over or alongside, you know, whatever piece of structure that I would like to do and, and really fish that particular area. And then you end up setting up, but you know that first or second drift oftentimes is just a trial because right, you're wrong. Out, right? You're wrong. Right. You didn't realize that that current was just a little bit stronger than you anticipated and it did not take your drift in the direction that you thought that it would. And oftentimes, especially early in the morning, you want to get on that bite right out of the gate. And if you miss that first drift, that second drift, if you're fumbling around and you have to reset, you may miss that bite altogether. So I'll tell you what, but I'm approaching an area before I even wet a line, I pull back the throttles, I stop the boat in the vicinity of the area I wanna fish. Doesn't, Doesn't have, have to be, right be exact, off, right? yep. just you know, relatively close. I'm gonna push fish it. I've designated the area I wanna fish. I'm then gonna activate drift it. At that point, I'm still not putting any baits in the water. I'm allowing the boat to just slowly drift for approximately 100 feet. Right about 100 feet 100 is what we feet. need to calculate the drift it start point. Of exactly, exactly where, where I need, need to position that boat yep. in order to drift directly over the spot that I have designated. Yep. In different times. So you can set up your drift it for three, five, 10, 15, or even 20 minute drifts. So I'll tell you what, we've got a lot more to talk about, a lot of exciting features to share with you. And I'll tell you, I can't wait to dig into it even deeper because already, this I can clearly see, TZ Touch 3 with version 2 software, an absolute game changer on the water. I got to tell you, like Mike was just saying, this really is a game changer. Absolutely. Know, for people like me, I would set up and try to hit my mark and just never hit it all day long. Just the aggravation factor gone with this. I can't wait to get out and try it. And I think we have another series on YouTube that's pretty good like this video. We do. So if you guys really like that Fish It Drifted video, we have made two uh, series of uh, videos that just cover all sorts of information. So Furuno Connection series or season one uh, was installing a full Furuno package on a, I believe, 36 or 39 foot CV for. Yes, Team Fortunate. Team Fortunate, absolutely. So that's got a lot of great information in it. And then season two, I was a big part of what we did was we went down to Florida and we set up five boats. Um, one with Furuno and one boat with all the other manufacturers and we tested everything uh, side by side out on the water for five days straight. 
And if you haven't seen that series yet or that season yet, you definitely want to do that because there is so much good information in uh, Bruno Connection season two. A lot. So it's definitely worth subscribing to. While you're out there trying to hit your marks, we've made it easier to find your marks. So aside from just being able to search by name, color, range, symbol, we've now added the ability to search by date. So if you know you made a bunch of points last week or yesterday or a year ago, you can search it that way. A lot of times people say, I don't remember the name, but I know I made it a month ago. Now, as you can see here, you can sort them by date, name. Tim can walk you through most of them. There's date, so we have name, icons, colors, and by range. And one of the other cool things you can do now, Brand, too, Brandon, is uh, you can search by pretty much anything. Uh, I know we have a lot of waypoints on this TZT3 here, uh, but I specifically know I have a waypoint called shallow, so I'm just going to type in shallow real quick. Click my green check mark, and boom, it's going to take me to that one specific waypoint. Just as easy as it can be. Another thing right there by that magnifying glass, there's that little box with a check mark, but I think if you have, there we go. So you can select multiple objects. Right here, we only see one, but if you have multiples, you can pick several, like say everything from yesterday. I know I went fishing. I want to get rid of that yellow circle because I like that for my navigation. Right. I want to make them all a red anchor because they were fishing points. You can do that to multiple points, save a lot of time instead of just going through one by one. Do them all at once. And speaking of points, a new way of entering points, even yes. if it's just a specific one point. Slide out from the right-hand side of the screen, and then we have a position entry. Say you get a call over the radio, your buddy's telling you where the fish are hot. Great way to just type that position in right here. And you can either find it on the chart or you can go to it. Yeah, that find is a really handy feature. If you just want to get an idea where it is, if it's close enough or too far for today, hit find and you'll see it on the screen with a little flashing yellow like color around it. It's like an aura almost. But it shows you exactly where to go. Yeah, it makes it real easy. So the next fishing feature I'd like to talk about and something that also still benefits the cruisers a little bit. I think so, because it really is a complete package. Yeah, I want to go find some dinner. <laughs> Sirius XM's fish mapping. So to get this, you need the BBWX4 that we have here, which, by the way, has a rebate. It does. Uh, through the end of December uh, 2021, Sirius directly is offering a, a rebate for the BBWX4. You buy it, and I believe it's a $99 rebate. So essentially, Brandon, what that's doing is it's this is the least expensive weather receiver we've ever had in the history of Furuno. Yeah, so that's great. Plus, it includes the antenna. So yes, it does. So that's even, even better. Deal, especially if it's a new one. So with that the TZ Touch 3, and an active subscription, which the subscription for fish mapping also includes all the weather data for their best offshore package, and your favorite, some music. Got to have music. Can't be on a boat and not have music. <laughs> so why don't we check this out about fish mapping? Fish mapping is the most comprehensive Sirius XM Marine service package that includes both fishing as well as all of our weather information. If you've never used Sirius XM Marine weather, Details on how to access weather and other videos will be provided towards the end of this overview. The SiriusXM weather service includes numerous weather features, radar, storm cell, and sea surface temperatures, to name a few. Fish mapping will enable saltwater fishermen to identify specific locations in the ocean with the highest likelihood of finding the fish they are seeking to catch. Subscribe marine receivers can overlay this valuable information via the SiriusXM satellites directly on the boat's multifunction display. Data for each fish mapping feature is updated at different times. These times can be viewed from your display. Coverage extends about 150 nautical miles offshore, well beyond the reach of cellular and internet-based services. Fish mapping includes eight dedicated features three sea temperature features, including sea temperature surface contours, sea temperature surface front strengths, and 30 meter subsurface temperature contours. Two plankton features, including plankton concentration contours and plankton concentration front strengths. The remaining features are sea surface height anomaly, weed lines, and fishing recommendations. 
Recommendations are based on ideal conditions for each species and not actual catch reports. In the absence of fish recommendations in an area, it is suggested to combine other layers that help determine the best or most probable areas that game fish will appear. Here is a suggested layer to combine. Sea temperature front strengths and plankton concentration front strengths. Note that where strong and very strong plankton and sea surface temperature fronts exist close together or overlap, these will be the most probable areas for finding game fish. Please note that the fish mapping service is only compatible with the Furuno BBWX4 receiver at this time. I can see your phone. <laughs> okay, can you guys hear us now? We're good. Almost. We're good. Yeah, that's what we just saw too. Okay, so as you saw a few moments ago on that serious XM fish mapping video. It makes it really nice, like Tim was saying, if you're a weekend warrior or professional. Absolutely. It doesn't matter. If you're a fisherman, what do you want to do? You want to catch fish, right? So what better way than having instant information at your fingertips to get you on the fish so you know you're going to come home successful? And not only that, I mean, if you really think about it, with gas prices where they are, the last thing you want to do is burn gas looking for fish. Absolutely. You want to know where to go. So this can only help doing that. And you can even select what kind you want for that day. You absolutely can. So you probably saw in the video, uh, you can choose the species of fish you want to target. There's uh, a total of 14 selections in our menu, but you only want to use the top six. And the reason for that is the bottom eight are subspecies. And that's something that's in there, but you want to, as you know, Furuno is always, yeah, don't use it for now. If you turn it on, it won't hurt anything, but Furuno is always working on new technology. So that's one that we let sneak out. Exactly. Being utilized. <laughs> So as you're making your way out and you're laying track lines, we've always added more and more ways to change the color of your track line as you're going instead of just the boring breadcrumb trail. Before you could do it by depth, sea surface temperature, if you wanted a specific variation, bottom discrimination, your speed. Well, now we've added day of the week. So if you're making trips on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you want a different color for each one, or even if you're making a trip. So if you're a long cruiser and you're running from Maine down to South Florida, if you don't turn this off longer than four hours during that week or however long it takes you, that will be considered a trip. And it's really easy to get to that menu as you just saw Tim walk through. 
So just more versatility. Absolutely. And, you know, it, whether you're a fisherman or cruiser, you know, a lot of people do like to define the colors of their track lines. And Absolutely. what better way to do it? Yeah. So as you're going to where you want to be, visibility is pretty important. So on that note, our integration with FLIR has improved even more than it was before. Now with the smaller 232 cameras, we can park them. That was one important feature that I think required a JCU. It absolutely required a JCU. So now, rather than having it remote on dash, you can keep that hidden or just don't install one, and you can tell it to park. So if you're on the water, it'll point the lens down, keeping it clean. If you're trailing a boat, it's a little more critical because you get stones flying up. And if you guys have never had to buy one, that lens is extremely expensive. So parking it is extremely important, which is why we always recommended the JCU before. But now with 201 software, you no longer need it. Exactly. We also have full IP integration and streaming and commands for the M300 series. With the 400 and 500 series, the control works really well. We don't officially support the streaming of video yet, so you'll still want to connect your composite video. You can connect the IP. We've seen it work just fine. But if there's any hiccups, that's going to be the first thing that TechSport's going to question with you. Expanding on the thermal camera options, because before we only had one, now we have two. OmniSense with the Ulysses Micro. Full IP streaming and commands, just complete integration. It's just got so many good things about it, Brandon. And OmniSense was nice enough to send us a camera about two weeks ago, and I've been testing it. And uh, But I think, you know, when you stop down my office, you found in, like, it It doesn't require a PC or laptop to set up. No, that was unheard heard of. of. Yeah, so you can do it right on your TZT3 screen. And um, it literally, without having ever seen one before, it took me about 10 minutes to set it up the first time. This is a really well-thought-out camera. It's too easy. It, <laughs> almost. Yeah. So if you don't have a OmniSense or a FLIR, or with the IP cameras, we always recommend it at the yeah. integration. We had a lot of people asking for third-party ones that were outside of that list. Now, you can actually use off-the-shelf video encoders to stream video over IP, which opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. It really does, because one of the most important things for Ferrino is we had a lot of our bigger boats asking to get their CSH-8 L Mark II sonar into their TZT3 network and seen across all the screens. Yeah. And this is definitely a way of doing that. You even get your own sonar icon on the screen. We switch over real quick. If I just tap the home button, you'll see the sonar icons right here. Yep. As you set up that video encoder, there's an option to tell it whether it's a Furuno sonar or not. So it makes it nice and easy. Now when you're in your car, you can still see your sonar. Absolutely. There are documents online to set all this up, so just be sure to visit the product page, click that View Support Tech Info button, and in there is all the documentation you can want. Along the lines of Tim's favorite earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Tunes. Fusion Link, we now support it via NMEA 2000. And I got to tell you, you know, that's extremely important to me. If you as a customer ever invite me to your boat and you don't have music playing, I either won't stay long or I might just not show up at all. So it's extremely important to me to have music on a boat. Uh, and you know what's really nice about this, Brandon, is you simply drop your Fusion Radio into your NEMA 2000 network and you have control of it from your TZT3. Yeah, it makes it really simple. One of the things that you do gain if you still use the Ethernet connection, if you have one of those style radios, that'll pass your album art. So if you really want to see those pictures off the albums, which most people buy digital now anyway, right. then you need the Ethernet connection. Otherwise, go ahead and do it the easy way with NMEA 2000. Expanding on our Navnet Command Center, we're now working with more and more items. Uh, Seakeeper, we're working with the gyros. Uh, for your cruisers, the long voyage guys, transatlantic or transpacific, we're working with HP water makers, so you can control them right from your TZT3. And something I was really excited to see is Oscar, which is a collision avoidance system that uses a camera that uses, utilizes FLIR components. And it uses deep learning, which is a branch of AI, to detect, analyze, and alert you to any objects in or on the water anything that could be dangerous to you. And I think we all agree. I know you voted before, you know, you spent the lifetime voting. I spent the lifetime voting and spent some time in the Coast Guard. And any one of you, if you voted, especially at night, safety is paramount. And if Oscar can help get us there, it's a, it's just a great feature to have. Definitely. If any of you have ever been offshore, you know somehow when you're 100 miles off, there is something out there that you're going to hit if you don't turn the wheel. I don't know how it happens, but it happens every time. Every time.
So back to the ease of everything, like those new features and the cameras, back to that just swipe and touch, good to go, our layers menu, which is any screen you're on now, and you swipe up from the bottom, and we pack that full of stuff to make it easy. If we go over to either multi-beam or fish finder, so we're on the fish finder, you can see here, Tim will walk you through some of the new things we've added. Absolutely. So on the left, what we have is all of our basic sounder functions. And if we look on the right, this is all the additional stuff we, we added for quicker access. Uh, you can make uh, instantaneous changes on the fly. And one of my favorite things is these preset frequencies. Uh, I know when I'm out fishing, I like to set my fish finder up for shallow, and I like to have a setting for deep, and I like to have a setting for sometimes I'm fishing for tilefish on the bottom. And, you know, at least in our area, they're extremely deep. So what I'll do is I'll name these shallow, deep, and bottom, for instance, and all of them will have my settings for that particular type of fishing ready to go the minute I tap on that setting. Yeah, it makes it really nice, especially in our area. Like we said, you can fish the bay, which is you're typically in 40 or 50 feet of water, or you can go offshore where you reach 2,000, 3,000 or deeper. Absolutely. You need to be able to have those quick changes on the fly. In the layers menu for the radar, for example, if you're on a radar page, when you swipe up, you'll now see the different modes. So you can switch between target analyzers, target mode or rain mode. You'll have your three versions of bird mode for calm, medium, rough. You'll have the res boost, you can turn that up to enhanced or just standard, right? whatever you want to do. So I think what you guys are seeing in all this is what we're trying to do is get your TZT3 down to a one or two button push. That way you can get to anything you want to get to faster and easier and get back to the most important thing, which is operating your boat safely. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest mission critical things in the layers menu would be switching your sources. So back on that radar thing, if you're a cruiser and you're off in the ocean, you're going to use your big open array, that long range, high power, like the 25AX. When you come into port, you're probably going to want to switch over to your dome or your low power open array. So you would just swipe up and tap the button, instant switch. You see no, both of your radars right in the menu. You just choose the one you want to use. Yeah, no time lost digging through menus, trying to see what you want to see or forget where it's at. I think if we jump back to the sounder page. Yeah, there was one important thing on the sounder page we wanted to cover with you guys. And that's uh, the information we applied to the depth box in the lower left-hand corner. So we've always had depth. Uh, so we still have our depth here in nice big numbers. We also have our temperature of the water. We have what our gain settings are. And we also have the frequencies of the transducer we're using, or transducers, depending on how we're set up. Yes. And one more thing, if you can swipe up again, that just came to mind. The display mode. So you'll see marker zoom has been added to this. That's a feature that we've always had. It's just been a little tricky to turn it on sometimes. Now it can't get any easier. You swipe up, it's right there by bottom zoom or bottom lock. Just pick marker zoom. Your page will come up, kind of split in half. Just drag that yellow bar wherever you want to zoom. If you're looking for tuna in the top 200 feet, you can blow it up on the left and still look all the way down on the right side. Absolutely, so all the information you need right at your fingertips. Quick and easy. And I'm sorry, I keep bouncing around. <laughs> it doesn't happen, it's a fish finder page. Some of you probably noticed it already, but we brought back the brilliant blue. It's just called blue in the sounder menu. If you've been, again, a loyal Furuno fan for a long time, you'll notice that this came right out of our standalone fish finders. It absolutely did. And you know, for a certain point in time in the software, we just had picked other colors. But this was such a popular selection for many of our longtime users that we just had to bring it back because so many people really liked it that much. And, you know, if you look at it, it really does make your targets pop on that blue background. Yeah, it's a really nice contrast. Along with improvements that we hear from you guys asking for or we find ourselves, one thing we noticed lacking was predatory fish over bait balls or under bait balls. So we did some improvements when you're using the deep impact, the DIFF amp, to give you that two or three kilowatt power chirp, or even higher in some instances with the TZ Touch 3, we've adjusted the gain. So now those predatory fish targets really show up as a nice 
fat target over that bait ball. Absolutely. Because if they're standing out, you know, as you know, uh, outside the bait ball, the predatory fish are feeding, a lot of times they can get lost in the bait ball. By adjusting the, the game settings just a little bit, we're able to make it stand out even more and give you, you know, the best possibility of a great picture. Yeah, it's just making your beautiful pictures even better if it's possible. <laughs> so another thing to touch on is check out this little thing. We just released this about two weeks ago, and this is the touch encoder unit. This is a little about two inch screen that has a rotor key on the outside that spins around so you can range in, range out. But it's also got a, a color LCD on the front that's completely touch compatible. It's a USB connection to your TZT3. And I think Justin might be showing you a closer up picture of it right now. But the thing I really like about the touch encoder unit is how small it is and the fact that it does so much. Yes. So think about it this way. Uh, you got an armrest in your pilot's chair. This thing will fit in just about any armrest made and gives you complete control of your TZT3 unit. Yeah, and it's about the most durable remote I have ever seen. It's very solid, heavy, stainless steel, nice touch. And you can do, I think, I don't know if you mentioned or not, you can edge swipe. You can edge swipe. And set up your function gestures for the two finger short press or long press. Absolutely, so if you plug one of these in, you won't find yourself looking for much more because it will do everything you need it to do. Yeah, very versatile little unit. So, do we have any questions from the chat? Yes. Can I take a screenshot with my FLIR camera? And if so, is that geo reference like normal screenshots? Absolutely, that's a great question. And uh, you're gonna make me think on this one, but you absolutely can. And the reason being is the TZT3 is going to screen capture whatever is on the screen at that moment. Yes. If that happens to be your FLIR camera, that's the screen capture you're gonna get. And yes, it absolutely will geo reference it to the position you're sitting in when you tap the screen. Very easy. Any mapping or Sirius XM coming to Australia? So the best bet there is we could try to answer, but the best people to know your area is your dealers and distributors. So Jay and Taylor is the main Furuno group there, and they may have some sub dealers around the area. I would check with them to get the best answers there. They know more about what's coming. We could really only tell you what's available right now. Okay. Is there a software update for TZ Touch 2 units that delivers the TZ Touch 3 capabilities being discussed? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, now, there are certain things you won't get, but for the most part, if you have a TZ Touch 2 and you upgrade the version 7.01, you will get a lot of these features. Uh, most importantly, these uh, slide up menus from the bottom will look identical. Um, so there's a lot of great features you can get by upgrading your TZ Touch U to burn, TZ Touch U. TZ Touch 2. You can trick yourself. 7.01. Right. <laughs> What do you need to have PPG work on the by boat? And will my TZT3 built-in sounder work? So for the PPG, the personal bathymetrics generator, you need a TZ Touch 3 with a DFF 3D, the multi-beam sonar, and an appropriate transducer. Now, speaking of transducers, we do have some nice combo units. Since you want to utilize the built-in trans sounder, fish finder, excuse me, we have combo units, so you can put one transducer in that has the DFF3D transducer, as well as either a Chirp or a traditional 5200, 5200 right. plug right into the back of your TCT3. So lots of options there that are available. Yeah, then you have two sounders on board, fish finders, excuse me. Can you plot water temperature versus distance to capture water temp breaks? Yes, so when you go in, you can do it a couple ways, but the easiest way is the track line. One of the variable track line options is sea surface temp, variation or just temp in general. So, so Amber, jump in on this real quick for me. Give me one second. All right. So in ship and track, and then when you scroll down, variable set color. Right. Sea surface temperature range and variation. So there's the yes and the how to for you. Okay. Can we import marks or tracks from other brands? So, yes and no. It depends on what format they will export. So, if they can export a GPX file, we will accept the GPX file right into the TZT3. 
if not, you need somebody like Andrew Seamarks or some other program that can convert versions over to our native format, which is TZD or TZX, or even a CSL file if you have less than 1,200 points. Right, and look for a video coming out soon on that because it's one of the next videos we'll be working on because we do get this question an awful lot, and it's actually a really great question. It can be done, it's just a matter of how you go about doing it. Yes. Does my TZT3 automatically update to its new software version? It does not. What we do, all the software we put out is freely available to anybody. So if you go to our website, www.farunausa.com, type in your model number and click it when you see it pop up under. Then click the tech support or new support slash tech info button. There's a software tab, takes you right to it. You'll see the software that can be downloaded freely and step-by-step -step instructions that are really clear. We've really refined them. Just go out there on a Saturday or a Sunday, just sometime when you've got plenty of time. Please don't do it one hour before the fishing tournament or the day before you're trying to sail the boat to Mauritius. That seems to be the only time people ever have a hiccup with software. Exactly, and trust me, it happens more often than we want to admit. Yeah. What IP encoder do you recommend to put with to put the sonar video on the network? So the best thing for that, we have documentation on the website. Mm -hmm. If you go online to the TZ Touch 3 and check under that document section and that view support slash tech info, you'll find that video encoder documentation and it'll give you a list, I believe, of what products. It'll show you exactly what you need to do, yes. Yeah, if not, give us a call and ask for we'll time. We'll be happy to help. Is there a plan to improve track management? So currently, the track management is pretty good. You can save them. You can save a lot of points. Um, if you are finding that your track is disappearing too quickly, there are a lot of variables. If we jump back in here again, under ship and track in the settings, you can set your track. If we scroll some, there we go. Your track interval can be set by distance or time, whichever is more appropriate for you or whichever you prefer. I love distance. And when you have it on distance, if we click that keyboard next to distance interval, you can set it to almost anything. 0.01 is going to be a pretty rapid update. I've always used 0.1. But if you're doing long cruises offshore where it doesn't really matter, you could almost put it to one mile or more. You're just going to notice a little blockiness to the line. So play around with it. You might find that you can get a setting that doesn't require any management at all. There is also, if we scroll down a little bit more, automatic track deleting. If you find that you're filling your tracks all the time and you don't care about the old ones, if you turn this on, it'll delete the oldest track to make the newest track at the rate that you are refreshing the track. It's a good point, uh, Brandon, because as you see, this unit is already turned to on, and that's because it's my personal unit, and that's my preference. I do keep automatic track deleting on at all times. Yeah, otherwise, you can just export your tracks just like the other user objects, points, routes, PBG, user settings. <laughs> I have a TZ Touch 3 12-inch, and I'm looking to get a new transducer. I'm looking for high and low chirp and also want to get the the Drift It and Fish It feature. I'm a weekend warrior. What do you recommend? So Fish It, Drift It is not a fish finder item. So right. that's going to work just off of your plotter and GPS signal. As far as the transducer, you really want to talk to a dealer that's in your local area because they're going to know what works best for what species of fish you're going after. And it's a lot of boat specific too. I mean, if you trailer yeah. your boat, we have ideas. You know, if you can, uh, if your boat stays in the water, we have ideas. I mean, there's just so many. I've never seen more transducers available than are available in 2021. Yeah, like my favorite's a B260 traditional 5200, but if you have a little trailer boat, I don't know where that's going to go. Right. <laughs> and also, um, what would I need to add to get the serious slash fish mapping features? So the serious and fish mapping features, you have to have your TZ Touch Three the BBWX4 and contact Sirius to set up a subscription to the fish mapping service, which that subscription again, covers the best offshore package for weather and radio. Absolutely. And you don't have to have it on for 12 months at a time like you might for your, you know, your my truck radio obviously stays on 12 months out of the time. But on these weather packages and fish mapping packages, as long as you keep it on six months out of the year, 
you can actually suspend it for the remaining six months and just pick up again as the season you know rolls on. Yeah, sure. it's really nice. They understand that boaters typically aren't year-round fellows. Another little plug for Sirius is that the Canadian customers can actually access that now as of about a year ago, I believe. Right. So you can access it for Canada. Fish mapping doesn't do much up that way. It's mainly a United States feature, the lower North America. Okay. With the sorting points by name, date, color, etc., if I assign colors to my catches based on tithe, incoming, outgoing, I then just display the incoming waypoints when I'm fishing that tide again. So I don't think you can display certain points. I think you have to display all points. Amber. So again, the points are an all or none type item. We don't have the ability, I guess I'll say yet, because that's something we can look into if we have enough interest. But as of right now, it would just be swipe up and points are either gonna be on or off. Right. I don't believe you can set just this symbol points, but that is a good suggestion and definitely something I'm gonna write down for our wish list. Can you show the anchor alarm enhancement? So the anchor alarm, yeah, if you, all right, we're on the chart screen right now. So Tim, if you touch the boat icon for me, and then anchor watch alarm, and we're probably gonna set it off pretty quick because we're moving. But now you can see up top, there's a stop and a reset. So as we get ready and walk out of here, you can hit reset now and it'll move it. If you hadn't actually dropped your anchor and you can just acknowledge it, yes. And to edit it, I believe you just touch on the red or the orange ring. Oh, too close. Edit anchor. edit anchor watch. Now you can actually use the outer teardrop to open up how big you want your anchor watch alarm area to be. And you can use the center teardrop to move where that anchor point was. That way, if you drug your anchor some or you didn't actually set it when you push the button, you just wanted to get that ready, you can do it on the fly. Really, the easiest anchor watch alarm I've ever seen in anything. I am going to reset it so we don't set it off. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I'll do set. And you can see there's always that little track line showing where right. you've gone while you're in the anchor watch. Really, really nice now. Any other questions? Okay. Can I run a high wide chirp and the DFF 3D at the same time without interference? So, yes. The High chirp doesn't always show up one way or the other with crosstalk, but if it does, we actually have a cable coming up soon mm -hmm. that you would plug into your TZ Touch 3 and plug right into that DFF 3D, and you can turn on what's called key pulse, where they talk to each other, and they say they alternate pulses. So this will say, I'm going, now you go. Now I go and you go. You will get no interference with that on. The only trade-off is if you were using stabilization with a SAT compass, that feature does not work with key pulse running. Does fish mapping work on the TZT2? Does not. But uh, what I'd like to uh, mention is, you know, first off, it's for the TZT3. Uh, but, you know, as Fruno is always trying to improve things, uh, we do believe in the very near future it's going to work with the TZT2BB. But right now it's a uh, BBWX4 with fish mapping is recommended for the TZT3. Yes. Does a SEX20 improve PPG data? Absolutely. Yes. So the DFF3D transducer comes with a motion sensor built right in. So you have your element and the sensor right on it. What's nice about that is there's zero setup required. And it works very well. When Tim and I first got our hands on it and we were testing this, we had the transducer and planer boards. And they were literally just bobbing like this as we were out there drawing up the data and it was just flat as perfectly the smooth, picture. Perfectly smooth, yep. So with the SCX20, you do need to set in some parameters, but that's really easy because there's actually a- Set up right, right in the TZT3. Yep. Yeah, you bring it up and you just put in some dimensions of your boat from the keel to the antenna, the width, the length, where you have sensors at, and it will improve the accuracy of that data. Does PPG replace Seymour charts? Uh, I'll take that. No. Uh, it really depends on what your uh, criteria is. So there's a couple different ways of looking at it. The last time I spent some time down in the uh, Gulf of Mexico, I noticed that the Seymour charts we were using on the boat I was on 
Uh, all the charts are in about 1,800 to 2,000 feet or more of water. Okay, so that's great. If that's where everybody's fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, that's perfect because the DFF3D capability is to about 1,000 uh, feet of depth. Okay, so you can create your own personal bathymetric charts using the TZT3 DFF3D um, from about 10 feet of water to about 1,000 feet of water. Past that, you'd want to switch to Seymour. So if you are doing a lot of inland fishing or less than 1,000 feet, you can create your own charts using the DFF3D and the TZT3. Or if you know you're going to be doing a lot of deep water fishing, that's where Seymour comes into play. And that's what you're going to want to use. Which, by the way, the Seymour charts are already on your TZT3. They're yeah. already on the built-in card. You simply got to buy an unlock code for them. Yeah, I know up here especially, as we mentioned, the bay is pretty shallow. It's not a lot of Seymour data. or well, there's no Seymour data right. in the Chesapeake. Right. So if you're going to go out in the ocean, we've got some Seymour charts up here, but when you come into Chesapeake, you can make your own. And they will work in tandem. You can actually run a PBG across a Seymour chart and see them both at the same time. They line up really well. And yeah, we've done it, and it's pretty impressive to see the, how, how well they line up. At the same time without interference. Yeah, we already got that one. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. My bad. <laughs> the answer was yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what chirp transducer would you recommend combining the FX3D to enable deep water 2,000 feet coverage? We actually have a newly available transducer for the menu, which is a 2 kilowatt low medium, as well as a DFF3D element. I believe that's the 165T542 LM. So check that out on our website. If you go to the DFF3D, hit the accessories tab, it'll take you down and you can select transducers. You'll see a lot of transducers specific for that as well as combo transducers so that you can have an all-in-one. And that transducer I just mentioned, it's about that big, size of a small shoebox. So you have a guy glass it in and it's an excellent transducer. Yes, it is. Especially for that deep performance. Okay. Is there a way to turn certain tracks off and on? I don't want to delete, just want tracks to, don't want tracks clouding up the screen. So that's kind of a duplication of the one question we did answer. It's almost like the points question. Right. So tracks are either on or off. Yeah. Okay. Can you show how a radar alarm zone is set up and used? The guard zones. Guard zones, okay. Yeah, I think we can do that. If the demo mode will allow it. Right. <laughs> so if you use, yep. Zone one. He's swiped up. Turn on guard zone. You can see it ahead of us here. Right. So we'll the top of the thing. down a little bit. So we can we'll do a resize. And then we can just drag our teardrops around till we get the size we want. And then once we get it where we want it, we just go on dot. So there's our guard zone. That easy. Now, if anything enters or exits that zone, it's going to set off an alarm for you. Right. And once again, we put a lot of stuff into these uh, swipe up menus from the bottom because we want you to have fast access to all this great information that's available on the PZT3. Can I get fish mapping on my current BBWX3 Sirius XM receiver? So fish mapping is only a product of the like we mentioned, it is the most inexpensive BBWX that we have ever offered. So if you're ever looking to upgrade, uh, now's the time. It's a perfect time, especially with that rebate. Exactly. All the way through the end of the year. So, you know, don't wait till January 2022. You want to do it now or before December 2021. Yes. Okay. That looks like that wraps up all of our questions. Okay. So again, if you don't already have the version 2.01 software, for your TZ Touch 3, just go online, FarunoUSA.com, type in the product or just search for it the long way. Go to that View Support Tech Info tab, free software, step-by-step -step instructions, make it easy as can be. All good points, Brandon. And, you know, I'd like to add while you're there, uh, you know, downloading your software or just visiting our website, there is a great amount, um, uh, just a great amount of information found on the Furuno Forum. If you go to our homepage, as Brandon said, FarunoUSA.com, scroll to the bottom, you'll see a uh, link to Faruno's forum. And what you might want to do is join our forum. And there's a lot of good benefits to doing that. Not only does Faruno moderate the forum, so we can answer your questions if you post them there. Uh, we have Faruno dealers there who help answer questions. We have customers just like you there who 
answer questions and ask questions. So if you find yourself starting out early, asking questions, you'll get some great information by people just like you and Furuno employees. But I think what we found over time is the people who use the Furuno form, it's a great way to become part of the Furuno family because as you learn things on your TZT3 or any of your other Furuno units, you'll be able to start answering questions for other people. And it's actually you know, a great thing to do for the voting community. Yeah, it's great. Sometimes I get on there and I see the question popped up. I get an alert, you have a new question, and it's already been answered by another user. We just had another question pop up. Um, can we use this software on the TZT2? So this software is specific to the TZT3. However, the version 7.01 makes it a lot. It's almost identical to this, except for like the PDG and the fish mapping at right. that point. But it will allow your TZ Touch 2 to integrate to your TZ Touch 3 as well. And give you a lot of the slide up menu benefits we've been showing throughout this uh, showcase. Yes. So I want the least direct about that form. If you can't seem to find it navigating through the web page, it's just forunousaforum.com. The USA part's important. Furuno.com is their uh, Japanese website. <laughs> So thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to stop back next week to catch Tim and others discussing how to pick the perfect radar for your boat and your navigation needs. And I already have a lot of plans for you thought out, so I hope you'll be there. Uh, since we're out of questions, I'd like to thank everyone for joining and enjoy the rest of your day wherever you happen to be located.